Thank you, Myrna. It is uh, very good for the First Lady and I to be here tonight on this wonderful occasion and to see so many great old friends and traveling companions. As some of you may know, three years ago I was privileged to visit the Holy Land with Tom Green, Barry Rosenberg, Mont Levy, Michael Steinberg, several other members of the Federation. It was a moving trip in many, many ways. I had the honor of visiting the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem. It was profoundly moving to meditate silently in the Hall of Names and to pay respect to the martyrs who are memorialized there. No one ever comes away from that experience unchanged. As was mentioned before, 15 years ago I had the honor of being here at the opening of this remarkable institution in the company of many truly dedicated people, including Tom, Governor Mel Carnahan, Bill Kahn, Leo Wolf, Milton Movitz, Rabbi Robert Jacobs. It was just a couple of weeks after the Oklahoma City bombing. The shock of it was still fresh and a vivid reminder of the evil that political extremism can unleash. Six years later, our nation suffered another shock on 9-11, when terrorists fueled by religious extremism crashed their jets into the Twin Towers and the Pentagon, killing nearly 3,000 people. Those attacks launched us into a war on two fronts that grinds on today and ignited a global struggle to uproot the brutal ideologies and religious fanaticism that bred terror. How do we combat the evil that exists in the world? How do we strike at its root before it bears more poison fruit? Bombs and bullets are one way, but there are other ways, even more powerful and enduring. Remembrance is one. Fighting indifference with action is another, and teaching tolerance and respect yet another. For the past 15 years, these have been the touchstones of the mission of the Holocaust Museum and Learning Center. The hearts and minds of hundreds of thousands of visitors, many of them school children, have been forever changed by the powerful lessons they have seen and heard here. So will thousands more. And that is what we celebrate tonight. No one personifies that mission more powerfully than Leo Wolf. As an Auschwitz survivor, Leo has dedicated his life not only to bearing witness to the horrors of the Holocaust, but to teaching the lessons of the past to prevent future generations from repeating it. For four decades, his vision has inspired the effort to preserve the stories of six million whose names are read on Yom HaShoah the liberators of the camps, and the survivors. Their stories are proof of the strength of the human spirit. They tell of kindness and compassion in the face of cruelty, of humor and bravery in the jaws of depravity, and of survival in the smoke of annihilation. Without their stories, the names are words without music, and a generation, and in a generation or two, even words are easily forgotten. So we remember their stories. And remembrance moves us to take action in Cambodia, in Bosnia, and Darfur. Wherever hatred and mistrust boil over to genocide, we remember. And remembrance inspires tolerance so that we do not demonize the other for his politics or her gender, for the color of his skin, or the name she calls her God. We remember. And remembrance propels us forward in our valiant and tragic struggle to live according to God's commandments. We remember. And remembrance illustrates the conduct of our public lives and the deepest recesses of our souls where only God 
can truly see. Fifteen years ago, Governor Carnahan spoke here about the trip he had taken to Yad Vashem and how much he had been moved by the children's memorial there. Governor Carnahan said that when the survivors are no longer with us, the St. Louis Holocaust Museum and Learning Center will be our witness and our teacher. How right he was. The dedication and commitment of this passionate community of teachers, leaders, donors, organizers, and volunteers, all of you here tonight, has made it possible to achieve this tremendous milestone. And we thank you for your wisdom, the knowledge, and the stories you have preserved and shared with the generations that follow you. On that note, I want to tell you about a speech the First Lady gave on Friday in Jefferson City. She was at Lewis and Clark Middle School, which both of our boys attended. Over the last 13 years, students at Lewis and Clark in Jefferson City, including our sons, have worked on an ongoing project. Their assignment for those 13 years was to collect six million soda can tabs, one for each of the six million who were murdered in the Holocaust. After 13 years, the students finally have all the tabs. And now the school will recycle those tabs and donate the funds to support the ongoing mission of this museum and learning center. The work of this center and the people who made it possible is touching the lives of people, especially young people, throughout our state. Yes, you are. It is vital that that work continues. Thank you all for your dedication, your service, and your unwillingness to forget. May this museum continue to light the pathway to peace and inspire the courage to follow it for generations to come. Thank you and good evening.